This is Dan Schreiber talking to you about technical leadership. I heard a quote from Phil Knight, the founder of Nike, talking about the business that he created over the last 50 years. And he said, a businessman can be an artist just as much as a writer or a sculptor. And I thought that was a fantastic insight that what he was doing was building a business, much in the same way that we as technical leaders are used to having built products and built software. So much about our experience as software developers can help us become really effective business builders. And as technical leaders, we can apply some of those fantastic concepts that we learned in what effective software development is to be really wonderful at creating artful businesses and fantastically optimized organizations so that as technical leaders, we're not just building software, but we're building businesses that are effective at building software. Now, I have a passion for building software. I've loved it ever since I was a kid. And I know many other technical leaders who have that same passion. At the same time, they feel like some of that passion was taken away or that was hollowed out when their responsibilities were changed as leaders. Now they feel like they're responsible for emails and meetings, not actually building fantastic products. Now I would challenge you to think about the business that you're responsible for, the organization that you're responsible for as a technical leader, and think about that as the new product that you're responsible for building. In fact, the impact you can have is by creating an organization that actually creates fantastic software, which is much more powerful than your potential contributions to the software itself. If you think about what tactics were effective at building fantastic software and how to apply them to what makes a fantastic business, I think you'll find as a technical leader, you're uniquely suited to build fantastic businesses that can highly perform and deliver fantastic software. So what are those lessons? First, I'd say automate everything. As a software developer, there wasn't a routine task that I didn't have to do more than once that I wasn't thinking about making a script to automate. I never wanted to do something more than once without figuring out a way to delegate that responsibility to a computer. And I'd say there are tons of routine tasks in businesses and organizations today that require systems and processes to make sure that they happen repeatedly and predictably in the same way. So what you need to do is be thinking about what checklists and workflows can you create in your organization to take that mundane routine task and make sure that it happens every time. And it's not dependent on one person doing it. It's not dependent on tribal knowledge passing along. And instead, you're automating those routine systems so that those get done without having to worry about them. Second, work to the solution. As a product creator, I would have a vision for the end in mind and I would figure out a way to get that product complete. If I needed something that generated a PDF, I'd go find a PDF generator. If I needed a library, I'd go find it. If I needed a new language, I would go learn it. As a business creator, you need to have the same vision for the end in mind. You need to understand what is the business that I want to create? What is the organization that I want to create? And you need to think about what do I need to get there? Oftentimes that's disconnected from the resources that you have at hand and you need to actually think, I need to be the person to go find those resources. I need, the person, I need to be the person to go find the people or the money or the time to be able to build the business that I know I need to create. So often we're thinking in terms of business building that we're constrained by what we have in front of us in a way that we would never feel as constrained when we were building software. And so as a technical leader, tap into that. Recognize that, have a vision for what the end state of your business is and go get the resources that are required to build that business. Third, use the best tools available. As a software developer, I always had a mental and actual edge if I had the best tools available to build the best product available. I knew nobody was gonna have tools that were better than the tools that I had for, to build the product I was building. In the same way, if you're building a fantastic business, don't try and get by with mediocre tools. Don't try and get by with just what you have on hand. Recognize that a business requires tools just the same as a software product. And you need HR, you need legal, you need finance, you need people. You need the best possible tools to build your business. And if you're not providing the best possible tools to your business, then you're gonna get a subpar performance. So make sure you're recruiting the best and make sure you're thinking about what does that mean? Is the best, does that mean I'm finding the people who have the sharpest ability to solve algorithms? Or is it finding the best team builders or finding the best recruiters or finding the best uh, team members? Make sure that you're defining what the best is and then you're going and getting the best for your business to make sure your business ends up being the best. Perform continuous integration. One of the things that I always loved about software development was the ability to commit code and have continuous integration give me feedback to know whether I broke something or how, it was, how the software was working. I was always 
confident in what I was contributing because I could always get the feedback that my, my contribution would make the product work well and not break anything new. Your organization is continually changing. You're making all kinds of changes to your organization every day. You're maybe adding staff, adding leaders, adding customers, changing processes, adding new products. Do you have a constant feedback mechanism so that you know if those changes are in some way making your organization less effective? You need continuous integration for your organization to be sure that you have a feedback loop from your staff, from your customers, to know whether or not your organization is continuously uh, performing at the level that you expect it to perform. If you don't have that feedback loop, then you're flying blind and you have no idea whether or not the new changes you're making, the new ideas that you're making, are actually improving the performance or whether or not you've broken the organizational build. Lastly, balance your technical debt. As a software developer, this was constantly on my mind. I'm taking trade-offs whether I'm taking a shortcut to do something in the quick way with the knowledge that I'd have to come back and pay back that technical debt and potentially refactor this part of the code. These kinds of trade-offs, they happen all the time in software and they're necessary. Sometimes you have to take shortcuts. And the same thing is true in your organization. If you're building an organization, you're oftentimes having to make shortcuts. You're oftentimes having to ask people to work longer or hire contractors or do things that feel like they may not be the perfect solution, but they're the solution that is required given the constraints on you as a leader. These kinds of organizational debt that you take on, you've got to actually make sure you balance. You have to make sure that you're, you're taking the time to pay back that organizational debt in the same way that you would come back and refactor to pay off your technical debt. An organization that's simply built on shortcuts and organizational debt, it's gonna crush and crumble in the same way that a technical software package would crumble if all you did was take the shortcuts and built up a bunch of technical debt. Make sure that you're balancing your organizational debt in the same way you would your technical debt to build an organization that's long-term sustainable and performing at a high level. Use these tactics. Apply what you know about software development to creating and the art of creating a business and an organization. And as a technical leader, you can be super effective at the art of building a business.